Marjorie Taylor Greene has a long history of advocating for political violence. Even before she ran for Congress, she was calling for Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, to be executed. The only way you get your freedoms back is it's, it's earned with the price of blood. In the days after the 2020 election and leading up to January 6th, she specifically said that there could not be a peaceful transfer of power and that instead Pelosi and Biden should be executed for treason. You can't allow it to just transfer power peacefully like Joe Biden wants and allow him to become our president. After she took the oath of office on January 3rd, she was involved in helping to plan some of the events of January 6th and she even used on social media specific code words used by violent extremist groups as a sign for attacking federal buildings and overthrowing the government. This is our 1776 moment. The United States Constitution contains a provision called the Insurrectionist Disqualification Clause of the 14th Amendment, and that provision says that anyone who takes an oath of office to support the Constitution, but then breaks that oath by engaging in insurrection against the United States, is disqualified from any future public office. On January 6th, if you're able, there are going to be possibly a million or more people coming to Washington to be there for this historic event. It's critical for everyone to show up and show the nation who we are. We aren't a people that's, that are going to go quietly into the night. After we filed our challenge to Marjorie Taylor Greene under the Georgia state law candidate challenge provision, she filed a separate federal lawsuit trying to block Georgia from even hearing our challenge. So she doesn't want to appear before a Georgia judge and answer for her conduct, she's trying to get a federal judge to block that from even moving forward. January 6th was just a riot at the Capitol. These men had ties with the violent extremist groups that assaulted the Capitol. Some of them sought pardons for themselves from the disgraced former President Trump or offered pardons to others to help move the January 6th insurrection forward and in fact also spread disinformation about the insurrection while it was happening to the general public even as they were encouraging the insurrectionists literally as the Capitol was being breached. If our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's, it's gonna lead to one place and it's bloodshed. Right. A lot of people say, shouldn't the voters of Western North Carolina decide whether Madison Cawthorn should return to office? Shouldn't the voters of Northern Georgia decide if Marjorie Taylor Greene should return to office? And it's important to understand that that's the exact question that the framers of the 14th Amendment wrestled with. Because after the Civil War, the voters of Mississippi might well have returned Jefferson Davis, the former Confederate president, to office. And likewise, Alexander Stevens, the former vice president of the Confederacy, all of the Confederate leadership could well have been reelected. But this is not about whether the constituents agree with or disagree with their policies, because this isn't about policies. This is about the Constitution and respecting the rule of law. If Donald Trump chooses to run for office again in 2024, then we will be prepared to file numerous state candidacy challenges against his eligibility for office, just as we've done here. This isn't about partisan politics. This is about the United States Constitution and provisions of that Constitution apply no matter who's violating them.